Davy Myers, and we're sat here in Hilversum, Holland, in the Whistlewort Studios, the world famous Whistlewort Studios, where um, I have my own little room, and um, we're here to talk about Eastman guitars, which are currently a big deal of my arsenal of instruments to make sounds and to use them on sessions. Um, I have used them a lot with my band, The Common Linnets, you might have heard of them, and I have produced many, many records in Holland, but also abroad, with um, many, many famous artists, and uh, I've been using Eastman ever since um, I bumped into my first ever Eastman instrument, which was a mandolin, and I bought it off the shelf at um, uh, Hampe Berkel Music which is a very small kind of acoustic based shop in the middle of Amsterdam and I go in there and they have all kinds of instruments and they usually are very nice they're very people that, that know what they're doing and they love their instruments so much and they said we have something you might like and that was this little guy and it was a mandolin and uh, I was I was stunned it, because it looked it looked the deal. It looked like, like you know, the the, the, the old mandolins from, from the early days and uh, the thirties. You know, the pre-war mandolins or late nineteenth century mandolins, which I like so much, but are just like really, really expensive if you can come across a good one. So um, this one is quite affordable. And so I went home and I thought, well, do I need another mandolin? I don't think so. I already got three. <laughs> But uh, I just, I couldn't sleep. I went back and I just had a look at it and the, 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 the craftsmanship of it is just oozing out of this instrument. It's just not, there's, I mean, there's, they do marketing of course and people will say this is the best and blah, blah, blah. But really to me, this instrument felt like, wow, this is like a one of kind mandolin, which they all are because all the Eastmans are hand built. I have been told. So uh, I bought this little mandolin, and this uh, it's a stunner. Um, the strings that are on it right now are not the usual strings they put on a mandolin. These are the tomastique, more classical sounding. So they're they're a little a little less sustainy, a little less bright, but a little more warm. So, but I like I like the sound of that. So I put them on, and it was just a, a, a great marriage. And I think. Um, this mandolin has been on tour, many many common linen shows. It's my it's my to go to mandolin live, and in the studio I've used it on on the common linen records as well. Um, in fact, one song of uh, the second album actually starts with this mandolin, and it's a little riff that goes something like. <laughs> it's like instant Kentucky. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I love mandolins, you know, they're like, they're not, they're not the, uh, it's not a, it's not a, a rock star instrument really, but it's just the tone is so nice, and you can always like, if you're in the bus, you know, it's never in the way, you can just take it out, and you can just like, you can play on it, I'm, and you know, I'm a guitar player, uh, usually I play guitar, and mandolin is something I really had to, had to learn, you know, because this, the, the, the tuning is so different, so you really, really had to dive into it. But the thing is, like, it's it's so cool to write on a mandolin because it, it gives so much, it gives, you know, just a new dimension. So I got really into mandolin playing, and I bumped into people in Nashville that played mandolin. I went to see a couple of bluegrass bands and all of that, and I found out that you can do stunning things with those instruments texture wise on, on, on texture wise on on a record. So. I got way into mandolins, started playing them, started to figure out how it worked. Started drooling when I went to the station in and saw like the real guys play. Uh, but so gradually I got into the Eastman catalog and then they made a stunning mandola, which I came across. And that's this one. So the man mandolin is like a violin and the mandola would be like the viola, which is like uh, a, a quarter step down. So on a, on a mandolin, you would play. If you would t take this form, it would be a G, and now it's a C. So under this, it's like a fifth under the G. So this, as you can imagine, gives some more a deeper voice. It has like a more 
more balls to it, I would say. And it's again, you know, it works the same way as a mandolin. It just needs some more chops because it's like it's pretty. It's like a very tight twelve-string guitar. <laughs> That's um, that's the thing I use. I I never use it live because I haven't found a way to amplify these guys. And um, we've been taking so many guitars on the roads that uh, you know we want to give our crew a little break. But yeah, I use it on on records because it's really again you know it's a, uh, for textures and all of that. If you want to, you know, if you're stacking guitars, the sound can get a little boring, you know, because you're like stacking just guitars that all have like basically the same tuning. This is your, this is your answer to something different so uh, but my favorite baby currently my two go-to instrument right now is the uh, Mondo cello there you go and that's this dude here and this is something amazing you I, I think the closest to what this is is like maybe an a string bass you know it doesn't even have anything to do with a mandolin anymore except for the tuning and uh, the pairs of strings but it's not, you know, a mandolin is like almost like a violin. Your 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 finger positions are really small, but on this one, you really have to, you have to push it a little bit. Like. I have been using this one on um, sessions with a, a German German superstar, Peter Maffei. Uh, I've been taken to the studio and everybody loved it. And you can just like. This is that if you if you can hear this is something that's virtually impossible on a guitar so you're actually this these two strings are like in bass region and these so your, your spectrum is quite broad on this uh, instrument um, I've been trying to arrange songs on it you know like play it only on this instrument and it's it's, it's really stunning it's beautiful again needless to say that the, the, the way it's built is just unbelievable it's it's really it, it, it oozes out craftsmanship and uh, it sounds just amazing it's a fantastic instrument and i love it that, so that was all mandolins and i thought like okay you know they do good mandolins they do good like stuff like that but how about the guitars and i um i started playing those eastman guitars so the first one i ever got was when Ilse and i were doing uh, the voice of holland we were um, coaching our team and um, we decided to have a bunch of Eastmans, you know. And uh, so um, the first one I got was this 12 string here, which is like, uh, as you can see, it's been well used. You got the buckle wear and uh, my friend Ilse, <laughs> you know, has a little, um, let's say, uh, she likes her nails. <laughs> uh, so is he, yeah, she's kind of eating this guitar, but you know, I like guitars that have been used a lot, so anyway. But this one is a stunning, a stunning 12 string guitar. That's a guitar we've been using on all common Linus records. I play it like Lovers and Liars, the song in the first record is done on this one, and it goes like. This, this particular guitar, Ilse plays live a lot, although it's mine, but, you know, I play her guitar too, so that's okay. Um, so this guitar, yeah, is like the best 12 string I've ever owned, and um, uh, it, it's just a special one because it's all mahogany, and it's solid spruce on top, and it's fucking loud. 
Did I say fucking? Oh, I'm sorry. It's really loud. <laughs> then um, I got this guitar, which is just a Stark OM20. And I've always wanted to have an OM. And um, so I got this guitar and I just love it. I love the hell out of it. It's like a very all round guitar. Uh, I love the body, I love the way it looks, I love everything about it, it's got, yeah, got a great pickup in it. Uh, but, um, so this guitar, so Eels and I have quite a collection of guitars that we use in the studio. And we have been playing all kinds of guitars in the studio that, that when we were recording stuff for whoever. Um, one, one, one time I recall, we were recording with a, um, a Chubba, Petoch and Chaba is a very well-known LA studio engineer. He's worked with Toto and uh, uh, it's I don't know. He's worked with everybody. He's like a great, great, well-known engineer. And um, so one day we were tracking a guitar and I, he just couldn't get the tone right. And he was just trying mics, trying compressors. And I was playing a very old guitar, very nice guitar, and. Um, He's like, man, I just can't get it right, whatever I try to do. And then I swapped to this one, and that was it. He's like, yeah, that's it. I took everything off again, you know, and uh, just mic in front of it, little compression. And he said this was the best sounding guitar he had. So we've been using that on a lot of sessions with Chubba. Unfortunately, Chubba passed away recently. We all still miss him. He was a great engineer, and uh, he knew what he was talking about, you know. And... Uh, uh, you know that that's th that story always comes to mind when I, whenever I pick up this guitar. Go like, okay, you know. Uh, so uh, this guitar I just use to write. I take it all over the place and uh, I record with it, and it's always there. It's my this is my buddy, my guitar, acoustic guitar buddy. <laughs> Anything on it like um, like your if you want to have a, a good strum, but it, it's also great for picking because if you do like ah, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a great 20 euro bottle of wine from the Burgundy that, that's like just great. You know, it's not like a hundred thousand uh, dollar or euro bottle of Petru. You know, it's just a great guitar and I, you know, it's just, it's a friend, you know, and they all, that's a great thing about Eastman. They all have their own character. No, no guitar is the same. So. I've been told that's, that has to do because they're all hand built and they all uh, work according to pre-war specs and uh, well that, that that gives it a lot of charm with it you know it's no it's no factory work it's not like they're they come out you know thousands a day or something so uh, great guitar again um, so that brings us to uh, another staple I, I use for recording quite a bit is um, this guy here, yeah, T48-6 Bigsby, you gotta have a Bigsby, so this guitar, I mean it's not plugged in, uh, is it, it's, it's just a great, you know, obviously, uh, uh, it kind of, a, it's like an ES kind of guitar, it's very warm, has like a center block, so it has a lot of sustain too, pickups are great, it's a great electric guitar, and, uh, Um, it's just an all-around monster, really. You know, it, it has nice. I like the 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 the, the pickups very much that are, that are on it. You can go anywhere with it. You know, if you have like a clean, nice, clean amp, it will have like beautiful harmonics and 
if you distort the hell out of it, you can still, you know, you can uh, you can do some corn on it. <laughs> anyway, and then there's uh, another one. It's this. Uh, it's my jazz. It's my jazz guitar. You know when I try to pretend to be a jazz musician and. Then, uh, <laughs> It even sounds great acoustically. So um, again, it's you know it's an arch top body that also the Mondo Cello has, and uh, uh, most of the guitars are really good at arch topping. Uh, again, this guitar beats many guitars I've played on, like jazz kind of guitars, like the arch tops. And this guitar, I actually do play live because I like to play play a lot with feedback and stuff like that, which. Uh, you know, might not be very obvious in the, lin in the world of the common linens, but um, it still still is, you know, like feedback and stuff like that. And like, again, very textural elements of uh, the music we make. So, uh, great guitar. So, that brings us to um, uh, the future. Uh, we have been talking with Eastman, and um, because we, 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 we love Eastman so much, um, is that um, we, we, we are trying to to um, realize a line of, of common linens guitars um, since we're all big fans of, of, of those guitars and uh, so we're in, in, in progress and um, the most irritating thing about that is that um, they've now come up with a bunch of guitars that are kind of like prototypes and guess what they sound even better than all the guitars I already have this beautiful guitar is the Eastman E10 SS slash V, which means varnish. And as you can see, this has all this beautiful details. Looks like a 30s or 20s guitar. It has a sloped shoulders, a droopy shoulders. That kind of, you know, makes me think of a J45. But I don't think they ever made black, black J45s. But anyway, uh, it has a Adirondack top solid, the back and sides are mahogany and uh, it sounds amazing it's a very very well balanced guitar this will be uh, the bird 3 in our custom series of the common linnets so it's either matthew or jake <laughs> i'm gonna play this <laughs> because ilza gets the bird one she already has a prototype i get the bird two which will be that one in this black color and this is like the bird three and a bird four coming up yes then this is a great guitar I think it comes at 49.9, which is like, you know, staying at home is more expensive, really. <laughs> um, so this guy here is the T58V varnish again, again with the lacquer. This is a solid uh, hand-carved spruce top, and uh, it's a stunning looking guitar. Uh, this will be the Bird 2, which will be my electric guitar signature except it will be black and uh, I can't wait to get it <coughs> meanwhile I'm keeping this uh, great guitar so uh, so this was me JB Myers from the world famous Whistler Studios talking about um, Eastman and how big a part they have become of my musical adventures um, if you want to know more about Eastman why don't you check the website www.eastmanguitars.com and if you want to see a bunch of people playing Eastman's Live, come check out a Common Linux show really soon, somewhere near your hometown hopefully. Um, so that was it for today, thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you live sometime, bye.